Okay. Hi, Lindsay. Good morning. So the way this uh, Zoom works, we're we're being recorded right now, just so you know. Yep. Uh, okay. Um, so, so I'm so glad that you both uh, are going to be able to join us. Phil may or may not be joining us this morning, so I didn't put him on the agenda. Okay. Uh, the hour goes by very quickly. I think, sure. Linton, last year, I think you um, participated. Yes. And uh, <laughs> I think we had a longer um, amount of, I think we had more than an hour last year. Yeah, I think we did too. Yeah. So we don't want to talk that much. You know, we don't necessarily need to repeat everything that's in the. Yes. The, the documents already. Right. Right. Um, right. Sure. That's right. Okay. Just hit your so, bullet, hit, hit the bullet points. Yeah. That's why I tried to just give you guys some talking points along with um, uh, the general agenda that will be for everybody else. And when yes. people come in, uh, in an ideal world, I'd like to have the agenda up instead of us, our pictures or anything like that. Just, you know, like in a waiting kind of a capacity, I guess you'd say. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the one that has the the times on it. Um, you guys got that one. The that's agenda that. talking points. No, well, that was one. That's one. Yeah, that's, and then the that's agenda for you. Yes, and then the agenda. Oh. Yes, the agenda yes. that, that yes. Try, tries to scale down the amount of time that we want to spend on any one section. I see. I see. I so see. So that we end up at the at uh, eleven forty five with enough time to have at least fifteen minutes of questions and. Right. Um, I thought that that made sense. Does that work for you guys? Yeah, it does. I, I think it, it just make sure that you tell the audience that that's what we're going to be doing. We're really going to be moving very quickly through the agenda. And so, well, that's why we're going to put it up and yes. let them know what we're, okay. you know, from the very beginning. Yes. This is not like a, yes, we're going to hold your questions. Right. And, you know, they can put their questions in the chat if they want. Yes. Yes. And Melissa, as the, um, the the chair of the meeting. Yes. In the beginning, I want you to make sure to mention to people that if they have any questions, they need to hold them to the end or put them in the chat. And also, um, you need to make a point of uh, asking people to kind of sign in, if you will, by putting their name and their email address in the chat. So Melissa, that will be something that you okay. need to state okay. at the very beginning. Then that way yes. it gives us some kind of idea, even though there's more than one ways to capture who's here. Yes. Uh, that would be the fastest way when we finish to be able to tell how many people actually attended. So you should probably uh, check in with them around the sign in, like maybe midway through, because maybe there's some latecomers that didn't That's hear true. the initial. So just uh, make sure that everybody knows throughout the meeting that they're supposed to be putting their information in. And that would be kind of, Melissa, you're, I mean, I, I could do that also, but if you're leading the meeting, I think it would be easiest if you remember to do that as well. So Melissa, I understood your concerns about um, Zoom bombing or, you know, the, the security part. Um, I, I'm not as concerned about that personally. I know that uh, I, in the past, I'm kind of tech challenged. Maybe that's what you were more concerned about. <laughs> so, no, I just, I just wanted to see because for when I do my meetings, I think it's because it's a webinar, and usually when I do my meetings, it's a meeting. So I'm, yes, yeah. I'm using that, like that's how I know how to run them. And so I always, from when I do it, you have to let in everybody. So that's what I was, I guess. Well, I just that, want to make yeah. yeah, that's why I thought I distinguished the, the two for you so yeah, that yeah, you don't, yeah. so you're not concerned about that. We're basically not letting people in. Yeah, it's a okay. private meeting. Okay. It's yeah. a public private meeting by <laughs> invitation. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. Okay. Yeah. So um, right. we're really not going to be expecting, you know, like a ton of people. I know that at least 10. Mm -hmm. um, and if we have 10, then that's good. Uh, but this is not a mandatory meeting. So, you know, we, it, it'll be different than last year where they had to attend this one in order to apply. Oh, there's, so, it's not mandatory. No, oh. uh, Shawnee and I have, have had conversations over the course of the last year. You know, she's been doing this for a long time for other, yes. Or yes. other groups. And yes. um, she's like, well, first she's asking the question, well, why is it mandatory? I mean, especially for people who either have applied before and they already have, yes. know what, yes. what, it, what the what, deal what is, what the routine is. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, we have to kind of be a little flexible as far as that's concerned. So we're going to try that this year and see what happens. 
Maybe should have said it was mandatory for new applicants. Well, next but year, optional, year. optional for you know previously award awardees. Well, most of the people who have uh, inquired uh, yes. uh, are people who are new. Yes. Okay. Uh, so. You All right. Know, Hopefully, right. You know, we can yes. make certain assumptions, but yes. you can make a, a note yes. in your notes that next year, in yes. the, um, you know, every year we try to improve. So that would be yes. something that we have to state ahead of time. Okay. Got it. Got so it. When yeah. we work on the application, yeah. that's yeah. where it needs to be. We can't tell them <laughs> now. Right. Yes. You know. Yeah. Got it. Got it. So, um, we have about five more minutes. Did you guys have any questions before we go over the talking points? Uh, no. You gonna run through it? We're, well, we're just gonna go through it right now. Okay. Time because you guys are talking more than I am. Right, right, right. Yeah, I did have one question. Well, go ahead. So the, so the interviews only for points under twenty or twenty-five. I did not understand that. Okay, so there's a total, I think, of twenty-five points. And actually, uh, Melissa, this is uh, part of the. Um, evaluation section and I'm not hopefully you understood how that part works as far as the points are concerned yeah so, so basically if there are 25 points in total yes and we're, we're not interviewing everybody oh 20 of, of 25 yes okay so first of all this. that's one thing you might want to point out that we're not interviewing every single person who applies it's only so people yeah. who, who mm -hmm. have score under uh, 20 or we have special questions. That's so you score. want the ones, the, the higher scoring ones, you don't, you're not gonna worry about an interview, but the lower scoring ones, you're where you wanna know who they are and talk to them a bit kind of thing. And that the, yes. Wait, 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 yes. Okay. wait, 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 hold on. So we're gonna, we're gonna do the um, evaluation. We're awarding points. Are, are, and then aren't the people with the higher scoring um, point, aren't they doing a presentation after that? No, we don't, we don't need yeah. to hear from them. It's only the ones okay. who we're, right, we need so more information my, from. All right, so I have to, my, that's, I did Well, that's why that. I wanted to go over it with you. And we do yeah, have we two, probably needed to go two, over this earlier. We have two guests um, here listening okay. in, just so you know. Um, okay. So, so the, the follow. Right, so we will. Oh wait. So we're gonna we're gonna do the okay the point. Do you have, do you have the schedule? Yes. Okay. So what I'm asking for then we're gonna be because this is different. Yeah. Um. So but so then we're gonna but it says on the apple on the RFP that we're gonna be inviting them to present their proposals by virtual presentation via Zoom. That's what it says on the current. Yeah. Some, RFP. not all. Right, but you were just saying that we weren't going to have them do that at all. So I guess I guess that's what that, that's not on the RFP that aspect. Okay, so let, let, let me go over it with you. About. Let me let me go over yeah. it with you real quick. Then on page three of the application, where it has the little table. Yes, I have the table. Okay, so for July first, you know that's when our deadline is, which yes. we need to remind folks of, and then July fourteenth, that's our RAC meeting. So at that meeting, we're going. I'm going to. We're going to uh, give a summary of all the results, and yeah. at that point, we'll be able to see who we need to interview a week or two weeks later at the on the 28th. That's the, right. the interview date. So those are 15 minute interviews by Zoom, like we did last year. Instead of doing everyone, we're only going to do a short list of certain ones. So, so it's going to be at least eight or so. yeah. But then, well, who are the, who are the certain ones? I think that's the what ones I mean. who, who score under twenty, under twenty five points, or and ones we have special questions for. Okay, under. Does that make sense to you? Um, not really. <laughs> well, here's the thing: so, we, we're not going to. You remember last year we we interviewed everybody, and it. No, took I understand. No, I understand that. I'm I'm more curious about the the point aspect of it. Yes. We're only interviewing people that are like in the medium level. Is that what it is like? Not the lowest performing, but not the highest performing, just the middle ones. Is that well, right? It, it might be the lowest ones also, but it's not oh, going to okay. be the highest ones. We don't need to take time okay. for it for to interview, especially people who have applied before and they already know, you know, their 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 applications are are perfect. We don't have extra okay. questions. All right. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so is that okay, you okay with that? Yeah, I just need to put it in my notes here. Linson, does that make sense for you? It too? does. So, uh, Mike, I guess the, the follow up question would be how do we notify people if they're not going to be interviewed? I think that we shouldn't leave them out there. After so the 14th, yes. when we meet as a group, then yes. I will contact people so okay. and, and set up the interview schedule. Okay, great. So everybody will get a phone call. Oh, yeah. And you'll just, uh, you'll just schedule that everybody will know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, good. I just want them to not be hanging out there. No, 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 okay. no, no. We, we okay. have to have a schedule for the 28th. Right. And that's, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm good with that. I, I like that we're trying to streamline things a little bit, right? So, well, we, we mm -hmm. don't have as many people as uh, yes. we have had in the past. So yes. we want to try to make our job is and everyone's job as easy as possible yes, yes. it is 11 o'clock yes there are okay only, there are two people who i see one person with a here comes a third person so people are going to start to come in now okay good let me uh see if i can answer the question of the hand up and oops hi cannoli can you hear me Canola, your hand is up. Can you hear me? Hmm. Well, this is a good way to test. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. Mm -hmm. Hi, Canoli, how are you? Um, uh, just testing this system here before we get started. Did you have a question before we begin? No, you know, I was just poking around on the site and probably accidentally put a hand up. I didn't. Oh, mean. okay. Well, then we know that our hand up works. So I'm going to put you uh, back in the uh, attendee category. Okay. Great. And yeah. the last 15 minutes during our Q&A, uh, we'll answer any questions that you might have. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Um, okay, so oh, who's, <laughs> who's going to share the screen of the, with the agenda on it? Is it me or... Do you have it handy? <laughs> yeah, uh, I just want to make sure. Okay, let's. Yeah, you can control. Because I know, but I just because I also have my notes. I don't want to share those. Oh, but, okay. Well, I'm. Okay. No, I think I got it. I think I okay. got it. Uh, let's Canoli, see. can you put your hand down in the box, and I'm gonna put you okay. back. Oh yeah. So is that is that? Can we? Is that yeah. the agenda? Is that correct? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, just making sure. All right, if if something else gets shared, I, I think that'll be fine. So, all right. Um, tell me, are we are we ready to start, or should we uh, wait a few more minutes? Well, let's see. We have uh, two, four. There are six people. Okay. I think we can probably start. I say go. Yeah. Say go. Okay. Woohoo. All right. <laughs> so, um, so welcome everybody who's attending to this presentation. And um, we're going to be talking about um, the Richmond neighborhood. Um, ugh. I got all the names mixed up. Richmond Arts and Culture Commission um, and Public Arts Advisory Council. Uh, Richmond Neighborhood Public Arts mini grant. <laughs> There's a lot of information. So, um, and we're really excited to kick off a new round of grants for individuals and groups who are developing creative projects that are going to reflect Richmond's incredible story. Um, and in the several several years, uh, I've been on the the commissioner of RAC, um, which I've lost count of the number of years. I've seen a ton of uh, amazing innovative projects. I'm really proud to be part of helping make Richmond an arts and culture hub. So I'm really excited to learn about the projects everybody's gonna be bringing us. So just a little bit of um, admin stuff. So we wanna know who's attending. So if you wanted to uh, go ahead and put your name and email address in the chat so that we know who's here, that would be awesome. And we'll remind you later. Um, and we're gonna be going over the info pretty quickly. So, but we will have some time for questions at the end. So just please hold your questions until the Q&A part. And I just wanted to make some introductions. 
we have myself, Melissa Turk, the chair of the Richmond Arts and um, now I lost the RAC. Um, we have Winifred Day, the Arts and Culture Manager, who uh, she and her team make it possible for the Arts Commission and the Public Arts Advisory Council to do what we do. And then we have Linson Bolio, the chair of the Public Arts Advisory Council. And uh, I don't know if you guys want to talk a little bit about yourself. Uh, no, I think maybe we'll leave that That's to the end go. so we can make sure okay. to, to uh, include all the important information. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we will just go straight into, so five minutes though, you still, <laughs> um, we're just going to go straight into the NPA history, the, pro the history of the whole NPA project. Linson, do you want to take that away? Sure. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, so glad that you all are here. We, uh, as Melissa said, are really looking forward to uh, your projects. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the um, uh, background of the NPA mini grants and also uh, uh, provide an overview of some key points in the request for proposals. So um, the, the Arts and Culture uh, Commission um, have been awarding mini grants since 2010. And we get our um, money, we get 65, we've been getting $65,000 a year pretty consistently <laughs> uh, <clears throat> from the general fund, from the city. And so with that $65,000, um, we award a number of grants. Um, and in 21-22, we awarded 13 uh, grants. And so we had uh, projects ranging from uh, art banners. Actually, if you go to Washington Street School, you can see uh, uh, one of the uh, projects that we funded uh, this last cycle uh, that were banners that are attached to the fence there. But we uh, funded uh, poetry projects, theater projects, a photo documentary, bookmaking, um, theater uh, production um, over here in Point Richmond murals, poetry, music classes, uh, training, actually music training for children. Uh, we did through PAL, did a grant there uh, teaching children how to play instruments and record in uh, music studios. So we've had a, a range of really wonderful projects. And so we're looking forward to your great ideas. I'm hoping that some of you have applied uh, most recently or maybe are continuing uh, projects um, uh, that needed more work and time and money. Um, so eligibility, um, Richmond residents um, and artists that have studios in Richmond. So you don't have to live in Richmond, but you have to be doing your artwork in Richmond. Uh, and then we uh, award, uh, we have sort of three categories for awarding um, uh, grants. We have a small category where you can get up to $3,000 for a medium uh, project. Um, we can award up to $4,999 and then a large project can uh, be awarded up to $8,000. So, um, and many of you are gonna, uh, this might be the sole funding for your project, but others of you might be having other sources of funding that you can use to build a larger project. And so maybe this is just a section of uh, the project, a project that you're currently working to fund. So in terms of business licenses, it says here that everyone has to have a business license for the city of Richmond. If you get awarded a grant, you'll have to have a business license. Um, everyone, uh, if you are working with kids uh, and all projects over 5,000, so that's not everyone, but individuals whose projects work with children and, or are over $5,000, you'll have to have insurance. And so we can help you with that business license and insurance project uh, process if you're not familiar with it. So don't um, get shook up about that. We'll help you uh, through that process. So we have a deadline of next Friday, July 1st for your applications. And we use a point system to um, uh, sort of grade the, the, the projects in terms of uh, our questions about um, uh, specific areas um, that are uh, that you talk about in your proposal, and Melissa is going to go over that uh, in more detail. Uh, but we do assign points, and so uh, we also conduct interviews. But this year, we're not going to interview everyone. We're going to interview those whose point totals were uh, to under twenty. So we have up to twenty-five points is the maximum number of points awarded. 
Uh, but if you uh, score a t under 20, then we are going to want to have an interview with you and or have questions. We might just maybe send you some questions we need for clarification. Uh, and then um, those of you, um, the, uh, and so, uh, yes, and so you'll hear from us, and some of you may have to do that Zoom interview where we get a chance to talk to you, because we really would like to meet you and talk to you about your project and hear about it. So then uh, we also, uh, I'm supposed to also talk about the selection panel. So the, the final uh, se selection panel, the, the decisions are made by the Richmond, the commissioners of the Richmond Arts and Culture uh, Commission. So that's my section. Okay. Um, so, but you, so you, you kind of covered what I was going to talk about. So, um, um, so I was going to talk about the application evaluation and selection process. Okay. So well, that's, I didn't talk about it. So go ahead. Yeah. Yes, yeah go you, ahead. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, you did. <laughs> um, okay. So, um, yeah, I guess that's what I was going to say. So oh, we, can, we are more detail. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. more detail. So, well, yeah. Okay. So um, we're gonna rank uh, the projects. Uh, excuse yeah. me, Melissa. Excuse yeah. me. Can you pull up the the RFP? Um. Yes. Let's see. Where did I put the RFP? Uh, yeah. There's lots of documents around. Okay. Where did it go? Somewhere, I don't know where it went. Um, here we go. RFP. So, yeah, here we go. See, now I can't find it. We have the shoot. I'm sorry. There it is. You have, you I'm have having a hard time getting it. Oh, that's a draft. Oh, no, that's a draft. So, that's okay. so. Does anybody else have it available? Uh, it was okay. I'm sorry. Maybe I can help. That's the sorry. I, there, thought, it, the I had it at form. It, there's the fillable form right there toward the bottom. That's the application, not the RFP. But I, yeah, I, mean, I certainly put that up. So it was part of the Zoom information, and in the there was a link. This yeah, so, that, so I'll, I'll just uh, put the link, I guess, in yeah. the chat because the link has both. Uh, yes. It, it, okay. Now I'm, Sorry. So, okay, here's, so here's the, I will put this link in the chat for how to apply here. Oops. And everyone who's joining us already has that information ahead of time, but. All right. Um, well, I'm going to send it anyway. Thank you. So, um, okay. so this has the, yeah, this has the, the actual application. Mm -hmm. There it goes. Uh, yeah. which I guess I already had it. So. Um, Can you open that? I'm, it's, can you see it? No. All right. There we go. Oh. I'm going to share again. Because oh. that is, let's see. That's, that's the application form. OK. There so we there we go. Can you see that? OK. Uh, yeah. You also have the RFQ, right? Well, yes. That's in front of that? Um. Hold on. No. R the RFP, let's see. Yeah. Yes. All right. I will now share. I have to do all this because I'm. No worries. I'm. Let's see. There's so many documents. Here we go. Nope. Mini grants. There we go. So this is the RFP. Can you see that? that coming? Oh, here we go. Is that coming through? Uh, one sec. Yes. Very good. Okay. There we go. There we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and I mean, I guess everybody has, has this mm -hmm. link. So mm -hmm. this, there you go here. About, you can talk about the points and all that a little bit better. Here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. We, we just talked about it, but so, um, yeah, so we're going to just, uh, once the proposals come in on July, after July 1st, we will be looking at all of them um, and assigning points to each of them based on the these criteria, clear project descri description, 
artist experience with the art projects, community outreach and engagement components. So one, one of the big um, things we're, we're looking for is an actual uh, community interaction component as well. So we wanna make really sure to explain what your project is doing to um, kind of support your support the Richmond community. So, and then the budget, sort of the fair and reasonable cost of the budget, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. And all of the commissioners will go through and um, issue some issue their points. And then we will um, contact you to uh, let you know if we wanna have an additional uh, interview with you based on the points that your project got. And then we will, we will have that conversation. And also if, if anybody, if we have any questions about any of the projects, we'll, we'll contact you to have a further conversation. And then we will let, we will make our decision and then we will let everybody know uh, what decision we made. And if you, if we decide to give you a grant, how much the grant is that we've awarded. Um, so, that's what I have. Anything else that you want to add to that? Um, I, let me just add that I see that someone has a question when we get to the Q&A section, yeah. unless, unless you are uh, actually on um, a speaker, uh, we'll take your question at that time. You can put it in the chat also. Sorry, yeah. thank you. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and then the, the, the projects will need to be finished by, what did we say? June, was it June? 23rd 2023 is that right mm -hmm. yes yeah okay so um and then so then the next thing we're going to talk about is the the budget uh yeah if you could scroll down uh, a little bit further uh to that page right there just as a point of information mm -hmm. these are all of the pieces of information that you already have and we're trying not to go over this application page by page today so after you read it, yeah. make sure that if you have any questions that you put your questions in writing uh, to me. Um, but thank you. Uh, okay, keep on scrolling. Phil will let you in in a minute, okay? Thank you very much. Uh, we're gonna go to the application section. Well, this is, okay, this is oh, the application. Very good, thank you so much. Oh, here it goes, yeah, again. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're working on our technology. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Yeah. Um, can, so, I mean, it's- Can fairly, you go to the application? The can application. you open it? Yeah. We both can't do it at the same time. That's the problem. <laughs> so can sorry. Can you see that? I'm sharing, I'm- I, I, see the, I see the main page, but I, uh, can you press the application? Move over, move, move over to the other tab. You're you're on the page. Go to the top and move to the the tab up here. Yes, yes. Just click on the tab. There you go. That should there. The website. That's yeah. Okay. No, so no, back to the. So phone. you're looking for the the website. The application. The application. Mm -hmm. Right there. Right. There we go. Mm. Oh well, once you finish the application. This is where you're going to insert all your information right. from the application. Okay, I, if you could back up. Back up. Where it says right down, uh, right at the end, you're going to get two lines there. You're going a little too fast. Slow down. Slow, where it says mini grant application. Mm -hmm. There we go. That's the one I had open before. Oh, well, <laughs> whoops. Maybe it's in the RFP. What are you looking for? We're looking for the actual application pages that has the budget information on it. I, I, Looks like this. Oh, that right here. Click on the mini grant application again. It might be on the call for grant section. Um, right above where it says application. Oh, I forgot to say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it's at the end, scroll down to the end. So it's mm -hmm. on page. Yeah. What I had open before. Is there no. another page? Nope. Okay. <laughs> we look at hmm. application. 
Well, it, you had it up earlier. I'm sorry for the technical challenge here. The application form basically. Mm -hmm. So that was okay. the, uh, I had the, the paper one before. This is the one on the actual website. So, I mean. Okay, good? well, she's yeah. trying to pull it up. Everyone who is here oh, actually it. has a copy of it. Okay. Uh, so we're going to just work with that. So the bottom line, um, any incomplete applications will not be uh, considered. So read the applications carefully. If you have any questions about anything that needs to be submitted, <laughs> make sure that you put it in writing and send, the, send, the, send your questions to me. So as we mentioned, the deadline is next Friday, uh, July the 1st by midnight. Well, 1159, basically, and it's all electronic. So this is the portal that you're going to go to in order to find the application and all the information that you need. Uh, the uh, two weeks later, when the group meets, we'll receive a summary of the of everyone who's applied and what their points are. And then two weeks after that, on July the 28th, that's when we'll have a session uh, to interview anyone who we want more information from, and that will be 15 minute Zoom uh, interviews. And then by the 30th of September, we expect the awards to be announced. And by November, the grants uh, should begin to, anyone who has all of their information submitted, then you'll be able to sub, uh, begin your grant as early as November instead of January this year. So make sure that you complete all the information. The main things we're looking for are who, what, why, when, where. You know, as far as the questions that are being asked in the application, they want to know uh, what, what you plan to do. So just be clear um, and succinct. Uh, the eligibility we've already talked about. If you are a fiscal agent for someone else, then make sure you state that. And whoever the fiscal agent is, that's the contact person for the project as well. And basically the fiscal agent becomes the person who, or the, not the person, but the organization that we're writing a check to uh, so that there's no confusion about who, who is in charge of that particular project. Um, the mm, descriptions are asking for a hundred words or less. So as I mentioned, if you could be succinct, that would be great application requirements, uh, bio. If you have pictures, it's optional. Uh, we've already gone over um, a lot of what's in the application. So I'm gonna move to the budget section. And let me see uh, if, if you, maybe I can find, well, maybe I'll wait till the end and I'll see if I can find that section there. But in the, the, in the budget, uh, on the budget table, uh, as uh, was mentioned before, some of these projects are funded by um, a combination of sources. So they're asking for you to put the other sources that are used to complete a project. So if you get $10,000 from someone else, then basically just state it. And the budget narrative sections, they just want you to spell out where your source of funds is for the different categories. So if it's salaries, equipment, stipends, overhead, materials, all those things, you just need to be able to uh, do some estimating uh, and show the difference between what you're asking from us and what you might get from another source in order to uh, complete your project. So if you have a project that's a $7,000 project and you're only asking for 5,000, uh, we'd like to get an idea of where the $2,000 is gonna be coming from. So, once again, the way the application is, uh, I'm sure we can't open this up, huh? Which? The application. Um, that's interesting that it's only showing the, the, the in part, not the, right. there's another part to it. Uh, apply here, yeah, go there. Apply here and that's. Wait, okay. This, but that's just. The uploading. And then do you have to go to the, try the mini grant application again? Yeah, that's the, that's. Oh. The, oh, but at the top, click that. There you go. 
That's that's when I've been. Yeah, I've had it. No, this is. That's not it. That's not it. Yeah, get rid of that. That's that's. Are, your, are you um, looking for the? You're looking for the budget form. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe we. That's your ahead. page. You could take your page that's down. That's yeah. something else. Yeah. That. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll get to it before before we finish today. <laughs> Sorry about that. But basically, we try to make it as simple as possible. Fill in the blanks. If you have any questions, just make sure that you ask. Uh, the budget part, uh, as far as the payments are concerned, uh, you get a, a half of the money at the beginning of uh, the project when you have a fully executed contract, and the remaining uh, will happen at the end of the project after you submit your uh, final report. And the final report, we're looking to know that uh, you did what you said that you were going to do, Yes. Uh, that you have evidence of it and photographs, flyers, all the things that happen along the way for you to solicit to get communi community support for your project. Um, receipts, uh, you'll need to make copies of them and make sure that they match once again what you said that you were going to spend. And it's really not that um, complicated, but you do need to keep track of your documents over the course of the begin from the beginning to the end of the project. Uh, let's see. I think I'm going to stop, and maybe we'll do some Q and A while I try to search for this budget page. Also, I think I was going. I was supposed to talk oh. about the oh. project support liaison. Here we go. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is that okay? Can I just yes, talk and Melissa, them? Melissa, I'm going to ask you to stop sharing so that I could try to pull this up. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Um, Benson. Yeah. So, um, at a certain point in the process, um, everyone who is going to be awarded a grant is going to be assigned a person that they can liaise with, and so. Uh, we try to have uh, our grantees connected with our commissioners. Uh, we don't have very many commissioners these days. And so you might end up having a lot of communication with staff. So, but, but we do try to connect you with a commissioner who can help you uh, work through um, challenges that you might come up against when you're in the midst of a project. If you need to make connections, like I was able to connect a grantee up with someone that they wanted to interview, for example, by going through uh, our, our staff helped us to uh, identify the person and get the number. So we can help you kind of make connections if that's what you need in order to uh, accomplish one of the uh, activities in your project. So just make sure that if you need anything that you reach out to your liaison, that person will be assigned to you and you'll have contact information. And um, don't feel shy um, connecting with that person if you need their help. We're here to help. And we actually enjoy it very much. We look forward to having a chance to work with you on your projects. So maybe we could, we'll move on to the Q&A. Yeah. Okay. I think we have plenty of time for that. Mm -hmm. um, good. Phil, did you have a question or something? I'm sorry, I was holding because since you're not on the speaking agenda, that's the reason why uh, I was waiting until the Q&A. Uh, no, I just got back from the Main Street uh, presentation uh, uh, of one of the um, mini grant projects. And they had about uh, oh, 25, 30 people there for the presentation. The artist was there uh, and the artwork that she had done for the project and it just it's just one of these mini grant projects that really turned out well. You'll see what they turned out to do painting banners, a uh, painting uh, owners of some of the businesses downtown and putting them up on banners. So when you drive downtown, you'll see these on the uh, uh, light posts. And that's just one of our projects. So that's all. Oh, thanks, Phil. Okay, if you have a question, you can put it in the chat. And thank you for those of you who have uh, signed in to the meeting. If you haven't signed into the meeting yet, please make sure to write your name and your email address.
Here, let me see if I can, you can, I can keep on searching here while you. Does anybody have any questions? I guess not. I guess not. I guess we did a fabulous job. <laughs> <laughs> we we're moving so fast. Uh, yeah, I, I think I, it's really not that complicated. Right, right. I think one of the main things that we're looking for as far as the projects are concerned is, is how they will benefit the neighborhoods in Richmond. Mm -hmm. So it's not a project that we want just one person to be responsible for. We want everyone to feel like the community is also participating. Okay, Rebecca, I see you have a question. I'm going to promote you to panelists so that you can speak. Uh, Rebecca, speak up, please. Thank you. And if you could unmute yourself. Hi, Rebecca. Okay, so I have a question. Um, we've been working, the NIAD artists, we've been talking about this grant the last few weeks. And one of the desires is to pair kind of a NIAD artist with a local activist, um, also a creative activist and bring in other NIAD artists to work, you know, kind of in tandem. One of our ideas is banners. Banners has been mentioned like five times in this talk. I'm wondering, like, are banners overdone at this point? Like, should we're kind of trying to think outside of the box? Um, we've kind of been, I took one of the artists out and we drove around looking kind of for mural spaces, or we thought about doing a couple evening events. Um, you know, our artists are very proud of being Richmond residents and are very proud of the activism work that goes on. So it's like, what's the best way? And the murals are, and I mean, the, you know, the banners of what have come up kind of every time, but I have heard them mentioned many times today. Can I, can I give some feedback to that question? So, um, you know, I think you can be really creative with banners, you know, so the, the Richmond, uh, the, the downtown initiative that Phil was just talking about are on the light post, but the banner project at Washington Street School is hung on the fence. So there are different places that you can put banners and different ways that you can put them up. And so maybe you can, if you think sort of out of the box a little bit mm -hmm. about where you might want to hang your banners, um, then maybe you can have a banner project. They're really beautiful. I love these banners. They're amazing because they allow a lot of people to participate. You should see how many children have their artwork up on the fences in Point Richmond. That's a lot of young artists. So um, it's, I, I love banners. Okay, that's great. Yeah, because I think even like you're mentioning children, one of the artists this week talked to me about like finding activists in the local high schools to work sure. with, which I like as well. So there could be also an age, you know, discrepancy. So thank you for that feedback. So I will not be scared about putting in a project concerning banners. Yes. Well, well yes. if I could also just add that um, the, Existing banners, the, especially the ones that Phil is referring to, have been there since 2013. So part of what we're trying to do is update the existing ones. Some of them are, are falling on a thread uh, for light posts that already have the hardware on them. You know that you'll see the hardware there. We're trying to, quite frankly, uh, use the hardware that's existing from the, from the past and just update things. It, so the city, the other project, uh, one of the other projects uh, that had banners uh, was very strategic and had locations all throughout the city. So, you know, I know that you are in a particular neighborhood for NIAD and maybe you want your banners only around your neighborhood, but there are other neighborhoods that could benefit from more information and exposure to the wonderful work that uh, NIAD is doing. And, you know, we could also help you with, uh, and which you may not e even need any help with the partnerships with the high schools or uh, other organizations that you're referring to. And Great. also, and also I will say that the city sometimes, depending upon where you want to hang your banners, has to get certain kind of permits. You want to talk to them about those permits, uh, like encroachment, the work that you have to do around that? Yes. Um, if you decide to um, place anything on uh, city property, uh, the murals that are going in the Greenway, there's a variety of um, 
requirements that the city has. And if, let's say, as an example for the banners, uh, if traffic is going to be impeded, then an encroachment permit is required. And if uh, you need help uh, installing the work and it is a city property, then that's something that we can work on with you uh, to avoid having to pay the extra fees. Because if the city uh, public works staff are doing the installation, then there's no confusion about what's required and what's not required. If it's independent contractor, then that's a different story and chances are uh, you'll be required to have uh, some pay a, a small fee for, for the encroachment permit. And that's something that we didn't know uh, before we started the project uh, last year, but we found out and we have a good relationship with other departments within the city. So uh, we'll make sure to add any extra costs that we didn't anticipate before, uh, we'll make sure that your proposal either has it included or we have it included, or it's just not an oversight. But thank you for asking. Yeah, thanks, I'm excited. Thanks so much for this today. Great, thank you. I can make a comment on that. Oops. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, uh, on, the, on the banners, um, personally, I think most of the banners around Richmond are too small mm -hmm. because they're up about, you know, 12 feet in the air or whatever. And uh, there are some limitations because of what they're going to be attached to, as Winifred mentioned. But uh, I, I mean, I'd get out there with a tape measure if necessary to, to see the size and how much more or how much larger uh, they need to be to see them from a distance or from driving by or from walking by or biking by. Um, just, a, just a suggestion. Thank you. That's a great suggestion. Thank you. Uh, so one thing I, I that kind of reminds me of is that we do, when we review applications for, for grants, we, we do, we will often uh, suggest changes if it seems like it's more if it's going to make it a better project or you know more relevant or whatever. So I think we're really interested in collaboration, I think, on this body. So don't be afraid to 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 um to apply for some, you know, tell us about your project and we're happy to help make it an even better project. So I don't we're not scary. Well we could give you another example um, of a project that um the artist wanted to install on public school grounds and anything that requires digging uh, on mm -hmm. private property also requires special permission. And with the schools in Richmond, that's the West Contra Costa County uh, Unified School District. So we have to make sure that all of those permissions are in place before we give you an award. So you may not have the permission in place when you're applying, but before you actually receive a contract, we would expect that you have something in writing that, that uh, indicates that wherever, whoever's property the work is on, that it's okay with them. That's, that's the bottom line. And even though these projects, uh, in some cases, if they're installation type projects may, considered as, uh, may be considered as temporary projects because the, the life of the grant is only until June of next year. Just using the banners as an example, those banners are going to be staying in one place for several years to come. So, you know, we don't want you to uh, be limited to the amount of time uh, that the grant, the actual grant, uh, well, when it expires, your project doesn't necessarily expire, also. <laughs> I guess that's kind of one way of looking at it. But if you have insurance that's required with that project, then you're, you have to you know, switch your insurance from the city of Richmond to whoever the owner is or not us, that's all. We won't be responsible for it after June the 30th of next year. Okay, all right. Any other questions? There's a couple of questions in the chat box. One is about insurance um, from a person with the neighborhood, one of the neighborhood councils. And then the other is a question about grants being limited to original works of art. Okay, you know what, for some reason, I'm not seeing what you're seeing. Yeah, I'm seeing, I says, can you say a little more about insurance? Can you give me the name of the person so that- uh, uh, Charlene, is, it's, it's a Char, let's see. Charmaine Tyler. Charmaine Tyler, yes. Okay, let me let her in.
page. There we go. Uh, Charmaine, can you unmute yourself? Oh, please. Okay. okay, I'm here. There we go. Welcome. Can Thank you ask your question? Yes. Oh, ask my question. Um, yeah, I'm with the Point Richmond Neighborhood Council and um, we have a project uh, in the neighborhood that we want to do. And I don't really understand the insurance um, part of this. Is that insurance for the artist while they're doing work? Or is that business insurance or what? It's a commercial uh, liability policy that the city of Richmond requires for people who are doing business with the city. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. And so do we, where, where do we get that insurance? Uh, well, we can give you a list of um, insurers who have um, insured previous uh, candidates for this project so that you can do your research and choose for yourself. But okay. That's, that's something we that get if you could send me an email after we finish the meeting, then I can make that list available for you. Okay. All right. Now, can we include the cost of that insurance in our grant application? Yes. Okay. As a, as a reimbursable expense, as long as okay. you have a receipt to show that you paid for it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And, and then Ann Lackey uh, asked the question about, are the grants limited to original works of art? Uh, Ann. Okay, Ann, there we go. Can you unmute yourself, Ann? And Charmaine, can you mute yourself? Yeah, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So I'm a volunteer with the Richmond um, Museum of History and Culture, and we have this extensive work of children's art that was created in the uh, child care centers during World War II. Um, and so we'd like to, to get a very small grant, if we were thinking of applying to, for 500 to just kind of help distribute, create and distribute um, um, replicas, what am I trying to say, but of the art to put in, um, you know, maybe the Kaiser Hospital to put throughout various um, places in the city with, you know, some of the most engaging art and then a description of just of the history and how important these child care centers were to allowing women to work in the war industry. Um, but so we wouldn't be creating, obviously, the works of art. We just want to be able to to replicate and distribute them throughout throughout the city with a description of their historical reference and significance. I would think that would absolutely be an allowable, you know, we'd probably like to see that. We love the historic preservation. We actually funded in this last cycle a gentleman who created a, um, a video, actually, of uh, the history of McDonald Avenue. And so that used, I think you probably worked with him, Doug Harris. Um, and so, yes, we're, we, we support that, especially our history here in this community. Mm -hmm. But right, I, 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 would, I would suggest that $500 doesn't sound like very much, and it, it sure won't get you very much duplication of anything. So okay. <laughs> think, think more seriously about a serious budget if you actually wanna create products that can be hung um, as, uh, as, as pictures, as, as uh, uh, replicated pictures in hospitals and things like that, you're gonna, it's, that would be, that has expenses associated with it. So think more thoroughly about that project. I, that would be my suggestion. Okay, I'll just, I'll do research on reproduction costs and things, but yeah, yes. great. Yeah. Thank you. You're so welcome. I have a, uh, also something that I'd like you to consider because it sounds like you don't own, if you will, these images. Uh, you before you would apply for a project like this, I think part of your research needs to be clear about who owns the copyright and who you're getting permission from in order to do the reproductions and all of the, those parts that seem like it's no big deal to someone. <laughs> but from a, a intellectual property perspective, uh, there's just some legal things that you wanna make sure that you're, that you're covered 
we want yeah. to do that research. The history of how they came to the museum is, um, so Monica Haley was one of the teachers in the, I think the Maritime Child Care Center. And so she was married to a Cal artist professor and she was an artist in her own right. And so she was part of this real, you know, I think in, in that time, the history was child development was a new field and some of it emerged out of these childcare centers. But in any event, so for her art was a very important part of the experience for the kids. And so she sent the artwork home one day and then asked a boy when he came back, you know, what did your mother do with the artwork? And the boy said, oh, she wrapped the garbage in it. Oh. And, so, <laughs> and so Monica Haley was just, you know, like appalled at that. And so she kept from that point on <laughs> all the artwork. I mean, there are thousands of pieces, both from, from the war up until the child care centers closed. But... I will do some research, but it's my understanding. And then she donated it all to the museum. So the museum owns the artwork, as far as I understand, through her grant of that. But I, I will do more research on it, um, on that. But that's my understanding, is that the museum actually, as the owners of okay. the art, because she granted it to them. Well, part of your research might um, be to reach out to the um, American, excuse me, um, California lawyers for the arts. They're based in San Francisco and they could absolutely answer any legal questions around reproduction and things like that. That's a great idea. Thank you. Yeah, I'm a lawyer, but I do criminal defense. So that's really a little <laughs> different. So then you're already familiar with California lawyers for the arts? I am though. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Phil? Yeah, and um, hello. Uh, hi. Hi. Uh, if you need some help researching uh, uh, how, uh, the framing for those pieces, I can help you with that. Oh, great, thank you. Uh -huh. Thanks. <clears throat> okay. That's thank it, you. I don't see any other questions. In Jed, did you have any questions? No, I think I'm going to let all the panelists in now and see if anybody else has any questions. So I'm also, uh... let's see, here we go. Jed, how are you? Hi, um, thank you for all this information. Um, I was wondering if you could just go over the, the part about the fiscal agent um, working with an organization uh, again. Uh, sure, there's um, some cases where an artist uh, wants to work with a larger, larger organization that already has insurance and already has some type of um, uh, way to support um, the financial part of a project and also maybe the administrative part. So you have to identify who your fiscal agent is on the application. I'm not sure if you're, are, do you already have a fiscal agent in mind or you just wanna know how you would find a fiscal agent or what is a fiscal agent? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think it's the notion that an individual can't be the contract can't be the contractor with the city, right? It can't just be an individual. It has to be through a nonprofit organization. Uh, is that sort of how the payment structure works? Some, sometimes, I mean, if that's the, the case, it could be an individual, but for if it's a fiscal agent, the fiscal agent would be the one who would actually receive the payments for the project. And then they turn around and pay you whatever the administrat administrative fee might be. Um, you know what, Cannoli, uh, had a fiscal agent for their project. And if you don't mind, Cannoli, can you tell us how that worked for you? Cannoli, there we go. Cannoli, can you tell us how the fiscal agent part worked for you? Because everyone's kind of different. Sure, um, this is Cannoli. <laughs> um, actually, we, we have a parent organization. It's not a nonprofit. It's called Arts of Point Richmond. And our project is 
um, taking it outdoors. But the checks were written to Arts of Point Richmond. They do the bookkeeping and, and we do the, you know, we turn invoices into Arts of Point Richmond to get paid. And um, then we just are submitting all of our invoices along with canceled checks and all the receipts that go with those invoices to the project at the end of the project. But if you were, if your fiscal agent was a nonprofit, um, it would pretty much work the same way. Like Intersection for the Arts is fiscal agent for a lot of groups and they, they receive the money. They actually charge something like 15% to do it, yeah. but they do all the bookkeeping and, and, and a lot of the interaction with the city of Richmond. And we just did all that ourselves. For, we, well, we do have a parent organization, Arts of Point Richmond, but um, we're, the, we're the coordinators of this project for Arts of Point Richmond. So we did all the, we did everything. We do have an Arts of Point Richmond bookkeeper who we submitted our invoices to and she wrote us checks. So it's just- what It, it helps simplify the project so that you guys can focus on the art, basically. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. Jed, did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions? Okay. We have a listener. Let me see if. We have a caller. You're a caller and you have a question. Can you state your question? Okay. Well, um, I think. Um, Winifred? Yes. This is Cannoli. I could just say something that might be useful to some, a couple of people that talked. Okay. Um, just so we, we, we received, we, we worked with Washington School and we brought them a bunch of art supplies and the kids there did paintings and various kinds of art. And uh, we scanned all those and turned them into digital and we blew them up and put them on 40 by 40 inch banners, which we hung in the schoolyard during the end of the school year. And now we've moved them to where they're visible to the entrance to downtown Point Richmond, which, which I think um, Lyson mentioned. Linson, yes. Linson mentioned. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And uh, it's been great. I mean, somebody told us that there were 60 kids doing some event there out in front of the banners yesterday. Wow. Nice. And we have been getting comments off from lots of people because everybody goes to Point Richmond or drives through the tunnel. Yes. These, these banners. So they're at the entryway to Point Richmond. And Point Rich, we also are printing um, members' art from Arts of Point Richmond on banners as a separate different project and hanging them up in downtown Point Richmond. So now we have, I think maybe we're gonna end up having about a hundred banners <coughs> spread around Point Richmond. And speaking to the, the woman from the museum that wanted to print uh, art, kids art from Second World War, that could be really exciting. And also the woman from NIAD, we might be able to help them with some of this, um, the technology because we print all our own banners. We don't pay anybody to print them and we have, you can see back here right behind me is a 44 inch printer that prints, you know, 44 inch wide. And so we, you know, and so we might be able to help one of either one of those projects think about what they might do with their banners. And we'd be happy to, you know, partner. We thought about, we thought it could be a great, exciting thing to to have other communities doing something similar to what we are. And we think maybe someday we'll have a big, jamboree where art banners from communities all over Richmond come yeah. together once a year or something like that. Big collaborative effort. So yeah. Anne is asking which organization are you? Is it Arts of Point Richmond? Yeah, the main, our parent, our main organization is Arts of Point Richmond. Can you put and it in the chat? Then that way. Sure. Can, yeah. Yeah, I can put some contact information in yeah. the chat. That'd be perfect. Okay, great. And we'll do that. And feel free to contact us because uh, we like to talk to people. <laughs> I just want to say one little thing. I'm Sharon. I'm part of the same uh, uh, project. Uh, I, I was really excited to hear about the, um, the concept of uh, the World War II Childhood Center Art. And it would be an amazing, that could potentially make an amazing banner exhibition. Mm -hmm. That was really interesting stuff. 
Thank you. Well, you know, it's interesting to hear the comments from different people. It's, and that goes back to what I think Linton or Melissa maybe was saying in the beginning. Think it through. Think about all the different parts of a project like this so that, you know, it's not just uh, uh, the banner possibilities. It's also the print possibilities. It's also website possibilities. It's a, a book. You know, there are a variety of things that it could be. So if you could think think it through, you know, we can't fund the whole thing, but maybe it could be a multiple year, you know, kind of a uh, effort. And that's what happens with a lot of these projects. They start and get funded um, for more than one cycle. So think about it like that as well. Okay, Melissa, back to you. Back to me, all right. Well, um, thanks again for everybody for attending. Sorry for the confusion, but it was a good conversation nonetheless. So um, go ahead, let's see, let me look at my, so uh, the deadline to apply is July 1st, which is coming up fast. So get those applications in and then um, contact Winifred if you have any questions after this meeting so we can, because um, uh, we would love to see what you have up your sleeves. Um, that's all I have to say. Phil or Linson, closing no, comments? I would just, I just want to say one thing. There are many different ways to involve the community in your project. Mm -hmm. So think very creatively about that too. Um, so that's, that's what I would say. It doesn't have to just be done in one way, in any traditional way. You can do it in different ways. Thank you. Phil? Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, um, these projects aren't like a, an art show for one artist. They're really uh, designed or hopefully designed to engage various people in the community to work with you on that. If you're doing a mural, you probably wouldn't do it yourself. You might get 10 people to help you, uh, all from the community or five people, whatever. Uh, and that would, that would hold for any type of artwork, uh, possibly any type of artwork. So good luck. It's a fun project. It's uh, free money and uh, free money. <laughs> just, just good art. <laughs> uh, Cannoli, I think I see your hand up again. And yes or no? No, it was, oh, I had put it before. up before when you wanted me to talk. Okay, no problem. Thank you very much. Okay, Melissa. We... I think we're done. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, Thank Once you. Again. It's so nice to meet everybody. Thank you so much for applying for a grant. We appreciate it. If you have any questions, make sure you direct them to me in email. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Appreciate All right. it. Mm -hmm. All right. If you're a PAC or a RAC member, if you could stay online. Okay. All right. Anyone else, have a great day. Okay. That's just us now. Uh, then let me see. There's a fifth person. Who's our fifth person on the line? If you're on the line, you can hang up now. Thank you. Be right back, Winifred. Okay. Okay. There we go. All right. Um, I am sorry about the budget page. <laughs> what happened? So did you find it? Uh, I have it, except for, uh, you know what? I, I, I really, I thought that you had the application section which has the whole budget section in it as so right. i don't know what happened there yeah um, i mean because that's the that's the application that's on the website so yeah is it, is it missing from the application on there because that's no i think i think that uh well i'm not quite sure exactly what happened all i know is that if people have extra questions i'm sure they'll let me know sure, uh, and sure. quite frankly i think it was nice to be able to have that conversation at the end yeah. So that people could kind of talk to each other and yes. uh, get a sense of of what what um, well, just get a sense. Period. Yeah. We're you know we're we want to work with people in order to uh, come up with with um, successful projects in the end, but we can't do the work for them. This okay. World War II um, okay. project now. There, I, I, I wasn't sure. Is she saying that they um, have the artwork? And they're going to have to reproduce the artwork in order to distribute it. Is that what I heard? Or yes, they have uh, you know a collection. 
they, they sounds like they had possibly thousands of them, however, and, and in order to hang them on a banner or frame them and put them on a wall, they need to reproduce them through uh, printing. Maybe Cannoli can help them with that, you know. And that then sounds like interesting. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's going to be an amazing uh, exhibit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Uh, how fun. Well, I'm, I'm glad that banners are still in, in style, <laughs> especially since, you know, I every time I drive around, I look up and I see the, the you know, the hardware. So years ago, there must have been a ton of banners throughout the yeah. city. <laughs> I don't know. And so we're going to, it sounds like uh, maybe we might have one more banner project this year. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys. Mm -hmm. Well, it's noon. Thank, Thank you, you very much uh, for Thank your time. I'm, yeah, Phil? Yeah. Let me mention one thing here. Um, uh, over at the um, Main Street Banner yeah. pro banner Project. Yeah. Uh, let me just suggest you guys look at those banners in terms of size. I, I, my personal feeling is they're way too small. Too small, yeah. And I well, don't, yeah. And, that, and I know, Winifred, you mentioned the hardware. I can't imagine anybody developing hardware for one size fits all or one size only. They've got to be adjustable. Could, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. Whether oh, yeah. or not they are. But the other part of it is I spoke with Gail McLaughlin at the uh, reception. And she is going to um, confront Tom Butt at Tuesday night's um, Tuesday night city council meeting. So you might want to tune in on it. Oh. Ah, I if, love you, you. if you look at the agenda, there's about five different commissions uh, that are all uh, up for uh, a vote. Uh, so for, there new, might be a for new members, right? Yeah, for for uh, you know the the senior commission, the yeah. all those. That's retaliation, you know. It's it's, it's not uh, not not okay. It's just an ego fit. So she basically she's going to ask Tom Butt to pull that or move it back to get to engage in a, a conversation with him. So uh, I mean, I'm not speaking. I, 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 I might listen in or or she wants to, but. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Anyway, she's going to send an email to him first. Uh, and uh, so I'll update you if I know anything more. Yeah. Thank you. I'm glad that uh, she was there and you were able to uh, speak with her about this because it's a, a unique situation and uh, that's good news. Thank you. Yeah. And also the, uh, the, the Main Street credited the Art Commission a couple of times. Uh, for the for the project, everybody clapped. You know, <laughs> I'm so glad you were able to go, Phil, because you know they, they set up the the date like uh, two weeks ago, and we had already scheduled this time. So yeah, so no, it worked out. I, it worked out. I I, I saw the whole, pretty much the whole thing. So you notice the difference between the black uh, historical uh, lamp post uh, that the R Richmond Main Street. Um, initiative project uh, banners were hung on they're much smaller than the ones that could be 96 inches so that's the reason why um, you got two different sizes so uh, I think I think well that's all I know the the, la the lar larger poles can be 96 inches but these smaller poles 46 inches is the maximum because you still have to have seven feet from the ground uh, right right I know a lot of extra yeah, yeah. There's 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 some issues with that. Uh, yeah, you don't want people going around grabbing them. No, yeah, no, can't have that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So were the merchants there? Uh, yeah, uh, three of the four were there. Oh, okay. Uh, and they were just, you know, they're they're just overwhelmed. They were excited. And then yeah. she gave them the original painting. Yeah. 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 Oh, I didn't know that. That is wonderful. Well, I'm glad that you were there and it was documented and another successful project. Thank yeah. you guys. I don't want to keep you any longer. Okay, Have a great you. day. We'll talk thank to you, you soon. Too. Have a good you one. Too. All right. It. Thank okay. you. Too. All right. Melissa, I'm going to find that application. <laughs>